Have you ever been driving along your normal route, one you travel every day, and then suddenly you drive up to a road closure? The road could be closed due to a water main break, or a car accident and the wrecked cars are blocking the road. Either way, you're forced to find an alternate route to get to where you're going. The circulation in the body, much like the roads we drive on every day, is set up in a way to allow for multiple paths for blood to get to where it needs to go. In this video, we'll look at one of these adaptations, which helps to maintain blood flow to the brain. The Circle of Willis, which was named after Thomas Willis, an English physician back in the 1600s, is an arterial circle situated in the skull around the cella tercica. Because the brain would suffer damage in a relatively short amount of time if blood flow were compromised, these connections allow for multiple routes for blood to flow to its destination. Failure of this safeguard due to a vessel rupture or a blockage is what causes a stroke. As a healthcare practitioner, it's important to be familiar with these vessels and what parts of the brain they bring blood to. This will allow you to understand the symptoms seen in your patients and allow you to arrive at an accurate diagnosis. In this video, I'll draw out the arteries that supply the blood to the brain and introduce the areas of the brain that each vessel will supply. We'll start by drawing the posterior circulation first, and we'll start with the vertebral arteries. And I'll label them with a V for vertebral. The vertebral arteries branch off the subclavian arteries, pass upward through the transverse foramen in the cervical spine, and then turn medially to ride along the posterior arch of atlas. Then, they ascend up through the foramen magnum. Once inside the skull, they give off the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries, and I'll abbreviate with PICA. Branching off a little higher, before the vertebrals meet, we have the contributions to the anterior spinal artery, AS. This artery runs down the anterior median fissure of the cord. The vertebrals then come together on the ventral surface of the medulla and form the basilar artery, B. Now shortly before the formation of the basilar artery, the anterior inferior cerebellar arteries branch off, and we'll label that A, I, C, A. Branching out the basilar artery, I'll draw these little squiggly lines to represent the pontine arteries. They'll supply the pons. I'll label that with P. The basilar artery will then bifurcate superiorly and form the posterior cerebral arteries, which I'll label PC. They run superior to the tentorium cerebelli, which we can see here. Before this bifurcation, the superior cerebellar arteries will branch off to supply the upper part of the cerebellum. And I've labeled those with SCA. Now again, this is the posterior division supplied by the vertebral arteries. In this space above, I'll draw out the anterior division, which will be supplied by the internal carotid arteries. These little circles will represent the internal carotid arteries, and I'll label those IC. I'll extend these arteries outward and taper them purposefully to show that their lumen will get narrower and narrower the farther the vessel extends outward. This narrowing is why emboli often lodge themselves here, causing a stroke. The internal carotid arteries have four branches that we'll be concerned with here. The anterior cerebral arteries, which I'll label AC, the ophthalmic arteries, which I'll label with an O, they'll travel with the optic nerve, the posterior communicating arteries, which I'll label with PCOM, and then between the posterior and anterior cerebral arteries, we'll have the middle cerebral artery, which I'll label with MC. This is essentially the continuation of the internal carotid artery. Now to complete the circle, we have the anterior communicating artery, which I'll label ACOM. One thing I want to clarify here is that the vessel on either side of the anterior communicating artery is still the anterior cerebral artery. Some students get confused about this. Think about how I drew the anterior cerebrals first, then connected them with the anterior communicating artery. Now this arterial circle that we see here, this is what's referred to as the Circle of Willis. 
Now the circle of Willis, or Circulus Arteriosus Cerebri, is formed when the posterior communicating arteries connect with the posterior cerebral arteries. Now the arteries included in the circle of Willis are the posterior cerebral arteries and their origin from the basilar artery, the posterior communicating arteries, the internal carotids, the anterior cerebrals, and the anterior communicating artery. Now the circle essentially connects the internal carotids to the vertebrals, functioning to maintain blood supply to the brain if any of these vessels become compromised. It should be noted that anomalies are common in the brain circulation. This diagram of the brain circulation that I've drawn is only accurate part of the time. Based on a study of 1,413 brains by Bergman and his buddies back in 2005, the classic anatomy of the circle is only seen in about 34.5% of the cases. Now before I go, I wanted to take a little time here to put some faces to the name, so to speak, and show what parts of the brain these vessels supply, or in other words, what their territories are. The posterior inferior cerebellar artery, which you can see here, supplies the lower portion of the cerebellum. The anterior inferior cerebellar artery, which you can also see here, supplies the middle portion of the cerebellum. The pontine arteries, which you can also see here, will supply the pons. The superior cerebellar artery, which you can also see here, will supply the superior portion of the cerebellum. The posterior cerebral artery will supply the posterior portion of the cerebrum, highlighted in blue here and here. The middle cerebral artery will supply the cerebral cortex highlighted in red here and here. And the anterior cerebral artery will supply the anterior portion of the cerebrum, highlighted in yellow here and here. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider clicking like and subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted to all my latest videos. For more helpful anatomy and physiology study resources, visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.